video we're going to have a look at how to create dimensions for an elevation or a section. Uh, this is the dimension tool that we're using, uh, but instead of using this linear method, we're going to use the elevation or elevation method here. Now this one's a little bit tricky to make work sometimes. Once you've got one done, I tend to just copy it and use it repeatedly. Uh, and what I didn't mention in the last video is it's very important that we choose the scale or work in the right scale before we start because it can really mess us up, particularly if we're starting to use things like text because it represents differently. It's the same size, but it represents differently based on the scale that we're using. So in order to make this work generally, it's a double click or a triple click and then finally we'll get it to place. Now this was very random and that was sort of deliberate because the point of this is that we can move it around and it automatically updates. Now this is going to be slightly different in this particular project to what I would normally do. The reason for this is because this is a, a fictitious world, a worksheet, and it's not based on real values. So how does this make sense? What I would normally do in order to convey these is to use a line. I'd probably use a, a dot and dash line or a double dash line to use as a, a reference line. Uh, red might be fine, maybe black or grey, it depends on what I'm trying to do. And what we're going to do is to draw a line and then we're going to snap or drag this down so it sits on this. Now generally, and for now I'm just going to drag this down, so this is representing our floor line. Now in terms of an RL, and that's what we're creating, we want to make sure that we're using a standardized number. Now this is a very strange number and it's definitely not standardized at all. So what I would try to be doing is to move all of this information up to a standardized height. Now what are we basing this off? We're basing this off our project origin. What's that? That's this point here and that point there is zero, 00. Now having a project origin, let's go down 86, having a project origin of sorry, having an RL for a floor level of 0 is dangerous because that means anything below ground level is minus RL and that's not good management. So what we should really do is go up a uh, standardized number. Now if we knew the project height, if we had a, a datum, a height datum in Australia, that would be an Australian height datum, or if we had a survey which showed an RL of the existing height of the house or the site, we'd use that. Otherwise I tend to use 10 meters. That just means we could go down 10 meters potentially and still have a, a positive number we're not getting into negatives, and it just works quite well for what I'm doing. Now we can also drag this around. What I tend to do again would be to drag this around, have that sitting beside our, our little arrow, or our triangle, and then I would put some text after it. So I might make this line a little bit longer just so it stretches to the end of the text, the number, and then I will type in what I'm talking about. So in this case I would write this as F, let's use capitals, FFL, finished floor level and I might talk about what room it is so maybe we'll say it's living room or bedroom or something like that. Drag that up to here. Now the blue is just based on the pen number. I'm going to change that to 1 just to keep it nice and simple. And then with my text, I'm going to go back into that setting and I'm going to change this to wrap text, which means it's going to fit to the size. Now, it's just a little bit hard to read and that's partly based on the font. What I'm going to do is to choose my magnet, my quick selection tool, double click and then add a dash space just so that reads a little bit more clearly. Now once I've created one of those, I can move, drag multiple copies, and create as many of these as I need to. So I'm going to create one here, which is my ceiling height. 
one here, one here, and we'll just do one as a ridge height. Now once I've got these set, of course I can change their names, but we can see that the dimension has already been set for this. So I will call this RL, or sorry, this one is FCL, finished ceiling level. And in this case it's not for my living room, this is for a bathroom. And now I could have these on the different side. I'll try to keep all of my dimension lines all on one side and I generally prefer the right hand side just because it means that all my uh, RL points line up, all my triangles line up and my text lines up at least left justified. I can do this on the left hand side of the page but of course it's a little bit more messy. So if I can get everything here, if that works, and this obviously helps if it's a smaller scale. If I was to change this to 1 to 100, what do we see? It all gets messy very quickly. So working at a smaller scale allows us to see more information. So that works well for us. All right, let's add this in. What do we have this as? This is an RL, and I will call this my window sill. RL window head. So what's the name mean? It's just helping to identify what I'm talking about. Now it's not that complicated on a very simple section like this, but if it was on a very complicated section or a very complicated elevation, having a name next to it is going to help identify what I'm talking about. Now what we could do, I've seen this done sometimes, is we may choose to put a linear line, which is dimensioning Let's just extend this so it's clear what I'm talking about. A linear dimension line from our ground to our ceiling level and look something like that. Now we could do this in addition to our height levels, our RLs. Um, I don't think this is necessary. Sometimes it's more user friendly, it's easier to read but this is a much better method using a height dimension tool like this particularly when we've got lots because otherwise it does start to get messy so that's how we dimension in both section and of course once we've done this in section and understand what we're talking about we can copy these so edit copy and use these again in our elevations now the rather odd thing about this is it's not going to be in line. Why? Because I changed my heights. So what I would now need to do would be to drag all of these up. And that's why I had a ground floor reference line. So I can drag all those up. And now of course it would be up to me whether I wanted to put these on every elevation or on particular elevations. Now we see that we've got some discrepancy already where the section and the elevations don't line up. Why is that? Let's fix this up. Oh, the other way around, I should say. And I need to drag this down to that point. There we go. Working much more nicely. So now these all line here. Ideally, I want to try to limit my leader line going through things that it doesn't belong to. So in this case, maybe I do move these over the other side. Let's have a look at how that could work. We'll grab these quickly. And mirror. Now we have to just be a little bit careful when we mirror. Sometimes that works really cleanly, and this is pretty good. It's not too bad at all. Then it's up to me whether I, I keep it like that or if I were to left justify these as well. That might make it a bit cleaner, but then we start to get some odd white spaces in between, which I don't love. So it's probable that I'll keep it right justified for the sake of consistency. And that's how we can do dimensioning in both our sections and our elevations. Again, this is slightly different because we're working 
in 2D projection. These are not real elevations and sections, these are just lines and fills, but mostly the um, methodology is the same.